in terms of the why does the distinction even matter, um, in our experience, it matters because it drives the questions that you ask when you're commissioning an evaluation. And it also drives the kinds of questions, the kinds of answers that you provide when you're doing an evaluation. So ultimately, it can affect how useful your evaluation is. So after Ray and I looked into this, um, we developed this presentation, um, which just represents our view and we're really hoping it can act as a springboard for some great conversation today. So I'll just get Ray to head off to the next slide. I just have to re there, Nat, because something's not working. So okay. please continue and I'll do that while you're doing that. Okay, no problem. Okay, uh, so essentially just the agenda for today, um, we'll do a bit of a presentation at the start and then we'll um, have more of a group discussion just to hear different views. So we'll look at evaluation versus research in terms of the purpose, process and end result. And then um, just some take home messages for both commissioners and evaluators. And then we'll head into discussion and um, some breakout rooms. So I wanted to start with two polls, um, two particular questions, um, which Flo, if you're able to assist with that. It is essentially um, around what your background is. So if you have a background in evaluation, evaluation research or both, and then also do you uh, commission evaluations, conduct evaluations or both? So if you're able to start plotting in your answers, um, the, the reason that we wanted to do this is that we realise the context in which um, people come into this discussion can impact their views on the topic. And also we're just genuinely quite interested to see the backgrounds of people here today. So we'll wait for people to put in their answers and we'll see what the what the spread is today. Yeah, so it's looking like we have quite a few people who have a background in both, which is quite interesting. And Flo, are we able to see the answers to the, the next question around whether people commission or conduct evaluations? Yes. Am I sharing the right screen? Yes. yes. Yeah, we can see that. Okay, so a few more that conduct evaluations, but also quite a few that do both. Have a nice mix there. And then have a couple there that commission evaluations. Okay, so this is, yeah, interesting, nice uh, mix of people here today at the presentation. Um, yeah, so people can keep putting in those answers, um, but I might get Ray to reshare the presentation and we will get stuck into it. Just trying again, yeah. Okay, thanks Ray. So you can see the slides, right? Yep. Okay, let's see if I can get a slide view. Yay. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Ray. <Please> continue. <laughs> 
So um, essentially we've structured our presentation according to three topics. So we'll be looking at the similarities and differences between evaluation and research according to the process, the purpose and the end result. Um, so on the next slide, we have um, a really useful diagram from an article written by Dana Vanza on the different relationships between evaluation and research. And I think this is quite an interesting one because it shows all the different ways of thinking of how research and evaluation intersect um, and that there's quite a few different views out there. Um, so again, I think um, Flo, if you're able to share the poll there, we wouldn't mind getting uh, people's insights around how they think, what they think the relationship is between um, research and evaluation. Um, we have five different options there, um, or oh, six different options there. Um, it could also be F is something else. So if your, your view is not actually um, listed there, um, then please feel free to, to mention that as well. And also we recognize that the views may change throughout the discussion um, as you discuss with your peers, uh, particularly in the breakout rooms. Um, potentially even after this presentation, you might have a different view. Um, your view may shift. Okay, yeah, so most are in that, that category D where there are yeah, differences and similarities as a bit of overlap. Okay. I was kind of hoping there was going to be something in F, something else, so then I could hear people's unique views around that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's really great to see. Oh, Martina could go F. <laughs> okay. Maybe that's great to see. Maybe, uh, Ray, if you could reshare the screen. Thanks, Flo, for getting those, those polls up. Okay, so we'll get into the presentation. Um, firstly, looking at the purpose. Um, so evaluation, uh, an often cited definition of evaluation comes from theorist Michael Scriven, who defined evaluation as the process of determining the merit, worth or value of something. So it's about providing specific and applied information to better understand and improve the effectiveness of a course of action. Um, so it's often very specific to a particular program uh, and determining about determining its effectiveness. Questions guiding the evaluation are often developed by the primary intended users of the evaluation findings. So in essence, those who are commissioning the evaluation. Uh, this can be compared with research where the ultimate purpose of research is theory testing and producing new knowledge. So it often involves more generalized findings. Its merit is judged by other researchers in that field and the questions are often developed by scholars in the field. Uh, Ray, if we could move on to the next slide. Thanks. So given that the differences in purpose, um, the evaluation and research questions are often framed in different ways. So we have up here on the screen that evaluation questions tend to make more of a judgment about how good the program was or how well it was done. So the examples we have here are how well was the physical activity program implemented? How effective was it in improving students' mental health? And to what extent did the program provide value for money? Research questions, however, tend to be a bit more neutral and general. They often draw conclusions about how things work in the world rather than just being focused on a specific program. So the example we have here is what's the relationship between physical activity levels and mental health in Australian high school students? So now moving on to the process. In our view, there is the greatest overlap between research and evaluation um, in the process of collecting and analyzing data. So with the example of the previous slide relating to physical activity for young students, similar methods might be used to recruit students and to measure their physical activity levels and assess their mental health. 
Um, but looking at the differences, so evaluation, uh, time and resources for data collection uh, are often set by the commissioner and tend to be a bit more constrained. If the program budget is modest, then usually the evaluation budget is also modest, but you know this is not always the case. Um, and timeframes may be driven by fixed deadlines for refunding decisions or because the evaluation is feeding into a broader review. The timeframe and resources for evaluation are generally determined by the program owner rather than the evaluator. And so this may also narrow um, the choice of feasible methods. Comparing it to research, um, time and resources for research are usually more in the researcher's control, but you know, we appreciate this is to a degree, um, you know, funding is competitive and, and all of that. Um, Ray, if you're able to move on to the next slide. Thank you. So now looking at the end result. The end result looks slightly different between research and evaluation, and it's often used in different ways. So evaluation findings can be used to improve how a program is working, to decide about future funding or expansion, or to provide accountability for funding that um, has already been spent. The end result is usually a findings report to the program owner or the evaluation commissioner, and the report may also be published. Um, looking at research, publication is the key driver for research projects since that is the main way that new knowledge is communicated. So research findings may be shared in journal articles, um, in industry reports, conferences or other channels. And just looking at some final um, take homes, both for commissioners and for evaluators. So first looking at for some take homes for commissioners. Um, essentially, don't be scared to ask value laden questions. Um, so for example, did we do a good job? Uh, how good is it good enough? When planning an evaluation, uh, part of the job is to make explicit with program owners and stakeholders what is considered good and clearly articulating the parameters of how worth will be measured is often actually harder than it, than it sounds. Um, some take homes for evaluators. Firstly, don't be scared to make an eva evaluative judgment when answering key evaluation questions. Um, remember the definition that we looked at earlier of evaluation is about determining the merit or the worth of something. So it's important to actually take that step and to draw a conclusion based on all the data. Um, of course, that judgment should be based on careful interpretation of evidence um, that has been systematically collected and rigorously analysed. And the evidence behind your judgment should be clearly explained um, so that readers can firstly understand how you came to that judgment um, and then also decide whether they agree. Um, so it's really important for evaluators not just to present all the data because the people that have commissioned the evaluation need to decide what to do with it all. Um, and that is essentially why they have engaged the evaluator, you know, in order to make a sound judgment about what it all means. The second take home is when you're prioritizing the use of evaluation resources to think about the decisions that need to be made based on the evaluation results. So the evidence that you collect will need to be robust enough to make those decisions with confidence. And this is really important because misunderstanding the difference between research and evaluation may create unrealistic expectations for both commissioners and practitioners um, around methodology, both what can be achieved within the available time and budget, and also what's necessary for the particular program and the decisions that need to be made. So we have a few discussion questions um, and this is where we might go out into breakout rooms. Um, the three that we've put here is why does this distinction matter? Um, and then we have one question specifically for commissioners, which is does the distinction between research and evaluation cross your mind and how does it impact how you write an evaluation brief? And then for evaluators or researchers, has there been a time when you felt research and evaluation have been confused and what has been the impact on the project? 
So I'll just quickly check in before we do go into breakout rooms. Um, Ray, was there anything further that you wanted to mention before we have a bit of a discussion? Um, I thought it might be good just to ask if anyone has any questions or comments before we go into breakout rooms. There's been a couple of comments um, in the chat. Uh, it might be good to hear from you, Martina, um, your F. Something else. Sure, I can I can share my F. Um, I mean, I I voted D, but when you said you know it'd be good to hear an F, I was like, no, I could I could come up with an F. Um, so I think we could view research and evaluation as separate activities, um, not the same thing at all. Um, research being sort of the set of methods that you, you, we use to um, build our understanding of the world, collect data, understand that data, that sort of thing. And then evaluation being the logic of evaluation and how we actually make those judgments. And so that logic of evaluation can use the evidence generated through research to make evaluative judgments. It could also use something else. Um, applying the logic of evaluation doesn't necessarily have to be applied on research. So yeah, maybe there could be separate things, um, but one can be used for the other. There's one idea anyway. What does everyone else think? That they, they could, that they could be different things? Any comments on that one? Julie, did you want to speak to the comment you made in the chat about domain two of the AES Evaluators Professional Learning Competency Framework? Yeah, I can I can talk to that briefly. So um, it's really about evaluative reasoning and um, what the logic of evaluation involves in terms of you know identifying criteria of merit, setting performance standards or thresholds, choosing measures, and then you know synthesizing the um, information you have to arrive at some sort of evaluative judgment. So evaluative actions, you know, coming from Scriven involve things like grading, rating, scoring, ranking, apportioning, comparing, attributing. Um, these are really essential things for evaluation. That's a really nice um, way to set out the logic of evaluation. I really like that. I think as Any well, those, um, those adjectives that Julie just used, or those verbs, um, sorry, verb is better than adjective for that word, those verbs, they're not necessarily part of the research process they are actually an add-on or something you can use research to do but it isn't necessarily research to do those things but they are actually fundamental to evaluation they're a core part of that activity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. would you agree that evaluation by necessity involves collecting some kind of evidence i mean you have to have something to inform your judgment but I mean, we definitely have people who make judgments without evidence. Are they following the logic of evaluation in that? Are they, maybe their evidence is gathered through methods that are not research, perhaps? Don't know, thinking out loud here. Mm. Part of it depends on how you define research, I think. Yeah, I think that's true. Yeah. I think oh. it's um, neatly contained in the little statement, fully describe, fully judge. So you do need research methods to come to a description of what the situation is and whether change was being brought about or not, but you also need to fully judge. So fully describe and fully judge are a neat little combination, I think. Where does that come from? Robert Stake, I believe, in the 1990s. Fully describe and fully judge. Yeah, that's nice. Chloe, you had your hand up. Yeah, I just um, wanted to refer to you know, my own experience around when the 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 difference became very evident between, um, particularly in the health sector, between research and evaluation, and, and over, I mean overall the, the approach, especially when you're talking about action research, it's very there, there's lot lots of similarities. And when I when I realised that you know picked up. The, the difference is around the questions, and you had this slide around the questions, the difference between research questions and ev evaluation questions. And then evaluation questions are, are really in instrumental, and, and it's also the, the primacy of the questions. The questions are, are what drives uh, the, the, the 
uh, nature, the inquiry, the evaluative inquiry, they are first. Whereas um, with a research lens, you may start with the conceptual framework, like the consolidated framework for implementation research, other types of framework, um, behavior change frameworks. And, and this is your starting point. And then you will use construct that you will test acceptability, desirability, feasibility, all these kind of things. But your starting point is the conceptual framework. The questions are second. In the evaluation, it's the other way around, is the questions are first. And then you'll pick on different conceptual frameworks or methodology toolkits to support that with a view to inform a decision. I think that that's it's my experience with the, the difference between both, which is at the end of the day, it's quite, you know, there's, there's huge overlap. Kate Williams. Oh, hi. Thank you for the presentation. It's been really good. Um, I I think the way I think about it is um, that oh yeah, I agree with Flo that you, you have a different starting point and you, you're you trying to find out different things. The questions you're asking are quite different. So research is really trying to understand how the world works, um, you know, what works, how it works, does it work? Um, and then evaluation is further down the track when we know, say, that a particular um, intervention has been demonstrated to have, um, you know, beneficial effects for a particular population, we want to know, does it work? Can it work in the real world under these circumstances? Um, you know, and in, not in our ideal conditions. So I, I think we do have a quite a different starting point maybe a bit further we draw on the findings of research and their and the conceptual frameworks but we have a different starting point a much more practical starting point i think yeah i tend to think of it in that way too research is how does the world work and evaluation is how does this program work in the world yeah yeah chloe okay so i um sort of like found this conversation interesting and I work so explicitly in domestic family and sexual violence evaluation space which is probably a, a particular um, context where transferability is very very low um, and we also there's very limited evidence in a lot of what works I think no one knows what works so what um, evaluation is often in this space is trying to um, formally present and understand what practitioners have developed that's never sort of entered that kind of formal um, research realm. So I'd say there's very little sort of research informing our evaluation space and a lot of it is practitioner knowledge and it's about translating practitioner knowledge um, and it's largely because transferability in this space is very low and evidence for what works is close to non-existence around perpetration for example. So it's very yeah. pragmatic. When you say transferability, Chloe, do you mean transferring from one context to another? Yes. Yep. Yep. So men's behaviour change programs are all about context and the communities they're from and their background and sort of what the legal system is like over there and sort of whether it's mandatory or voluntary. So there's just very little that transfers and there's the little belief that one thing that would work in one place would work in another, even if you did some sort of a decent amount of cultural mm -hmm. adaptation, it would be essentially a different program in the end anyway. So what you're trying to do is kind of a systematic approach at the local level and building on that? Yeah, and often just understanding context and trying to document what's being done and sort of what the service models are. And even before we even think about anything, I think a lot of process, a lot of developmental, but outcome to us is a very far down the line outcome impact evaluation. We're just trying to sort of improve readiness and document mm -hmm. what's being done and sort of consolidate that knowledge of First Nation practitioners in different spaces. So kind of bringing knowledge together. 